Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat Purnamudachate, Purnasya Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vashishyate, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Brahma Purnam Infinite Adaha That Purnam Infinite Idam This Phenomenal Universe Purnat From the Infinite Purnam Infinite Udachate Emanates Purnasya Of the Infinite Purnam Infinity, Adaya, having been taken away, Purnam, the infinite, Eva, alone, Avashishyate, remains, Shantihi, peace. Translation, Aum, that Brahman is infinite, and this universe is infinite, the infinite universe proceeds from the infinite Brahman. Then, taking away the apparent infinitude of the infinite universe, it remains as the infinite Brahman alone. Aum, peace, peace, peace. Namaste. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to our new series, on Brihad Aranyakopanishad. What you just heard is the Shanti Mantra. And this is the invocation, not only for Brihad Aranyakopanishad, but all the Upanishads in the recension of the Shukla Yajurveda. So before reciting this Upanishad or studying it, one should recite this mantra, which also appears in the Upanishad itself as mantra 511, the first mantra of the fifth chapter, which is the addendum or the supplement covering all the advanced meditation techniques. So this mantra is very significant because it states in a very a compressed way, the entire philosophy of the Upanishads. This is where philosophy and religion break down. That how is it that the phenomenal world, which appears to be an emanation from Brahman, something different from Brahman, also appears to be infinite. But we also know by revelation that Brahman has no parts. Brahman has no divisions. It cannot be separated into the superior and inferior states. So how is it then? Now this is a mystical process. This is a meditation process which cannot be understood rationally, but it can be experienced through meditation. And basically how it works is that we see the phenomenal universe as an expansion or emanation from Brahman, because where else is it going to come from? Brahman is the source, and the phenomenal world is the emanation. Both of them appear to be infinite. But what we do in meditation is that we take the apparent infinitude of the creation away. Huh? And what is left is only Brahman. Because there can't be two infinities. How can it be possible? 
Now, you guys who are into math are going to tell me, well, there's all kinds of infinities. But those are within very restricted domains, and they are quantitative infinities only. But what we're talking about here is the infinity of everything, gross and subtle and beyond beyond the known, beyond the unknown, beyond the knowable. Now, this is a mystical thing. It can only be experienced. It cannot be explained rationally or logically because our intelligence uses symbols. And there are no symbols. There is no... <laughs> mathematics, there is no syntax or operations that reflect the actual reality of the absolute. In the world of the absolute, my Adi Guru was fond of saying, one plus one equals one, and one minus one equals one. <laughs> so, all Purnam adaha purnamidam. Huh? There is this phenomenal world and there is that Brahman, and both appear to be infinite. Purnat purnam udachyate. That the gross material world and the subtle material world appear to emanate from the Brahman. Purnasya Purnam Adaya. If we take away the infinitude of the infinite creation, Purnam Eva Vishishite, only the infinite Brahman remains. So this is the theme. This is the philosophy in a nutshell, in a capsule form, highly condensed. And we are going to go into the meaning of this in the ensuing episodes of this series. It's going to be a long series. Brihararanyaka Upanishad is the longest Upanishad. And Shankaracharya's commentary on it is the longest of his commentaries as well. And even there are some fragments missing. It is still by far the greatest Upanishad. So what we're going to learn as we go through this is that the difference between the absolute and the relative world is one of appearance only. This is called maya, what is not. So the infinitude of the creation is only apparent. It's only an illusion. Uh, just like the snake seen in the rope or the water seen in the desert or the islands seen in the ocean. It's a trick only of perception. Because we use symbols for thinking, those symbols can become confused. So we're going to go beyond symbols, beyond thought, beyond knowledge entirely, and experience the actual absolute truth. And that is the meaning, that is the content, and that is the experience that you will get from studying this Upanishad. Now, as far as the structure of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, it's divided into three books of two chapters each. The first book is called Madhukanda and consists of chapters one and two. It covers philosophical interpretation of ritual and the nature of the self. It is called Madhukanda because of its focus on the essence or honey, Madhu, of the universe, the unity of everything. The second book is called Munikanda, and chapters 3 and 4 cover the metaphysical teachings such as the essence of the self and its identity with Brahman. 
also called the Yajnavalkya Kanda, as it contains several teachings and dialogues involving Yajnavalkya. The third book is the Kila Kanda. Chapters 5 and 6 are a supplement with meditations, sacrificial rituals, instructions for spiritual discipline, giving esoteric insights into Brahman and the cosmic order. So I hope you will join us for this new series and be very careful to listen to each and every episode to maintain the continuity of the teaching so that you will understand this immensely profound Vedic literature, the Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.